Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Now recently we got a comment from one viewer, it's right here, wanting me to go over the top five biggest reptile poops. So unfortunately today, I guess that's uh, what we're gonna have to do. Let's uh, roll our sleeves up and uh, let's get to work. No, I'm just messing with you guys. We're gonna be talking about some monitor lizards. Now, I get this question quite frequently on my channel, and it's due to the fact that, really, because I own a pretty good variety of monitor lizards, I guess, for someone on YouTube. Um, of course, I'm no, no, no Kevin McCurley, but, you know, I try, I try my best here at DBCV Exotics. Of course, that question being, Dakota, what monitor is right for me? What monitor would I sh should I get? What are the beginning monitors or a beginner monitor that's a good starting pet to get into the monitor lizards? Take today and really answer that question, go a little bit more in depth into my usual stuff. We'll be really talking about like, is there really a starter monitor lizard? You know, what you should be looking for as far as what monitor lizard you should want and things of that nature. So we're gonna cut the intro short. We're gonna be talking about monitor lizards and we're gonna Adding suspense. I'm adding suspense. Roll the intro! Starting out with this video with the really big question is being, you know, Dakota, is there a starter monitor? You know, what starter monitor I should get? What are the beginning monitors? Uh, my answer's really gotta be, I, I don't think there are a beginning monitor per se. Um, don't quote me on this because God knows probably a month from now, I'm gonna make some sort of top five starter monitors and just completely make myself look like a hypocrite. But for now, you guys know my personal opinion on the matter and that's the fact is I really don't think there is per se a beginner monitor. That's definitely not to say I don't believe you should have any type of reptile experience before actually diving into monitor lizards. Um, I think there definitely is a need to be some things that you need to know as far as husbandry goes and just re really respecting the animal in general uh, before you actually get into owning some sort of oranid. Uh, but with that being said, honestly, I wouldn't really say that like one is, you know, the beginner monitor, nor do I really think you should start out with uh, say this monitor just because of the fact that you think it's easier in order to just get it like, almost like a gateway to the next monitor level. To really get my point across on what I'm trying to say, I mean, I can go wicked in depth with this, almost to the point where it would almost have to be two videos, so like, I don't know if you guys want to make a second video, want me to make a second video on it, yeah, maybe subscribe, hit that like button, maybe put a comment saying, Dakota, you're a dumpster fire, any of those things would really, uh, really give me the motivation to really go even more in depth into this topic. But yeah, there's there's just so many variables when you're thinking about, you know, what makes a good starter monitor? Are we talking about personality-wise? Are we talking about care-wise? The size, the conditioning, the husbandry, uh, just kind of what animal type of this animal, you know, is arboreal, semi-aquatic, fully aquatic, uh, just terrestrial, things like, there's just so many things to talk about that when what's would seem like such a simple question of what's a good starter monitor, it really raises to what amounts to such a complex answer thing you probably expect out of me is to answer that complex answer, you know, really give you all the facts, the details, and understanding of what that needs to uh, happen when choosing an actual uh, varanid or monitor lizard. Uh, however, I'm not gonna do that. Nope. Here at DBCV Exotics, we just fuck around and find out, and I just like pulling fast ones on you guys. I do apologize. <laughs> Instead of actually answering the question, I'm gonna answer your question with a question. <laughs> yeah. Bet you didn't see that one coming, YouTube fan base. Oh yeah, really? Woo! Come in a left turn out of nowhere. Oh, is he gonna answer the question? No, he's gonna ask him more questions. What is this? This is a dumpster fire. That is, uh, that is what this is. <laughs> I think there are a couple of questions you should ask yourself before getting into Varanids. Uh, number one, of course, is going to be, um, uh, why? I guess, why do you want a monitor? Is it for the intelligence, the size, just the wow factor? Are you trying to impress your friends? Are you trying to boost your ego? I mean, there are tons of things for t or tons of reasons why one would want to get a monitor. So the first place I would start before actually choosing the monitor is really trying to figure out what makes it like, why would you want this monitor? Or why are you interested in getting 
getting the monitor species. Now the second thing I would add to that is what parameters are you working with? Are you in some sort of household which is temporary such as apartments, townhomes, renting? Uh, is this something where you are dedicating to a full house? You know, you're a homeowner, you've got the space. Uh, where do you live? You know, is this something where you can potentially do outdoor caging uh, year round? Or is this something where you live up north in the frozen hellscape where you could really only have animals out for a week before it gets back to 20 degrees and they have to be inside for the rest of the time. Do you have a spare bedroom dedicated? Do you have another building? These are questions you really have to ask yourself before actually choosing a monitor lizard. And then of course, after you get your parameters all set up, you know you know what you have, you know what you're able to accommodate for. Um, what are you looking for out of the monitor lizard? Are you looking for something that can be tameable? Are you looking for something that gets a pretty good size? Are you looking for something like a challenge? I mean, these things can be like Aki monitors, Asian water monitors, of course, Argus monitors, of course, anything that has to do with attitude. Argus monitor is the choice for you. <laughs> There's a lot of questions, and it's something you guys have to really answer yourselves. It's not something that I can kind of, you know, just give you straight out. Oh, get a peach throat. Oh, get this, get that. Don't just get a peach throat because that's the first thing I threw out. It's just the first thing that came to my head. I might be, I might get a peach throat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are definitely some ways that I can steer you guys in the right direction when it comes to these certain, certain parameters and care aspects. And I'll definitely be videos I'll be making later on. Uh, however, it's not the video we're talking about today. It's the video to answer, you know, what monitor you you should get and when we're talking about that it's really up to you I mean it's whatever monitor you want thing I really recommend is having some sort of reptile experience. I think having a lot of reptile experience depending on the species you get. I mean, we can go anywhere from something as small as like a Kimberly Rock, uh, Timor, uh, Aki Monitor, or going all the way up to some of the more fiercer stuff, you know, the Niles, Ornates, um, Crocodile Monitors, of course, uh, things like that. And really, it just depends on, the, I mean, there's so many aspects <laughs> that you can go. So it really, the big thing that I would say to you guys is, Figure out what you can care for, what your parameters are, you know, what is the yeah, feasible space you can provide, what kind of care can you provide, are you able to achieve these basking spots, the water features if they are needed, the uh, added height if they are arboreal, and really what kind of personality you're looking for a monitor, are you looking for something a little more fierce, a little more uh, food motivated, are you looking for something that's going to tame down like a little puppy dog, are you looking for something that's just going to be more of a display animal, there are a lot of things to ask yourselves when you're thinking about getting a monitor lizard. It. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. My rep, my rep talk. That's patent now. Rep talk is patent. You cannot use it. I patented it. <laughs> Alright guys, and there you have it. There's another episode of me just rambling about stuff for a little bit with showing some cool animals in my B-roll. Uh, thank you guys for coming and watching today. Of course, as always, huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they make enclosures like this one. It's pretty rad enclosure, man. A uh, couple monitors would do good, but not many monitors would work very well unless you get the very big one if you want to figure out what the big enclosure is. Make sure to head down there in the description at Zen Habitats where we also have all that other stuff. You know, the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the merch that we've got going on. We got a bunch of stuff, of course, which always leads us to Patreon. Patreon.com slash DVCV Exotics. You get the Patreon stuff, the bonus content, the behind the scenes. You get to see cool animals. You get a, a, other stuff for dibs. Stuff. You get stuff. <laughs> you pay me and you get stuff. That's how Patreon works. Alright boys and girls, we're gonna wrap it up for today. I will see you tomorrow most likely. If not, I'll see you the day that I come to see you. And that means me posting a video and you pressing the notification bell. If you haven't pressed the notification bell already, that bell's down there as well. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. We'll see you next time. Let's roll that outro.